Hello everyone, this is ATSTS here, back with some more Bronze League Heroes! Now, I'm really excited about this game for two reasons. Number one, the Warhound April Fool's unit is uh, going to be taking place for both sides. As you can see, the little Warhound is going to be happily mining those minerals. I've seen a lot of pro gamers tweet that they hate playing with these little workers, but I think it's awesome. I'm glad that Blizzard is actually having a little bit of fun with their game. It makes it feel more... I don't know what they call it, but it makes it feel like a game the Blizzard's actually paying attention to, if that makes sense. But anyways, spawning up in the top right side is everyone's terrible British player. It is going to be Total Biscuit. And yes, he is technically in Gold League, but let's be honest, he plays just as bad as the rest of the Bronze players out there. And his opponent down the bottom left side is going to be Reboot! Now again, if you are very confused as to why you are looking at Warhounds right now, maybe you're watching this video after April Fool's. Blizzard for April Fools made all the workers little warhounds. Um, of course, it's a joke because the warhound was removed during beta, and a lot of Terran players were very upset about it. But it is back for a limited time only. This is literally a 24-hour option, so I wanted to cast some games while the skins were still out there. And uh, regardless, you can see they don't quite have the full animations. They just kind of slide around there and get stuck in the same position. But that's fine. That is fine, but when Total Biscuit sent me this replay, I'm like, John, his name's John, for those of you who don't know, I was like, John, any chance I get to make you look horrible, I am all about. So it is going to be a TVP, and of course, remember in Bronze League Heroes, it's more about funny games that are not played at the pro level, and less about every single, being, uh, every single game being done in Bronze. I don't know if that takes a bit of the magic away, but uh, for me, it's, it's definitely what StarCraft should be all about which is having fun, and remember that it doesn't matter how good or bad you are at the game, StarCraft is still the best game out there. Now we do have Mr. John Total Biscuit Bane. You gotta be saving up for Command Center right here. Looks like he might be dropping the Command Center on the low ground. And just knowing his playstyle, he does decide to do that a lot. Although, actually gonna be getting the Orbital here, so his build order, I don't even wanna talk about how bad it is, but that's fine. He's got to save up for a command center, then use that money on the orbital, and then eventually build another command center. He should be sending down an SCV at some point here. John, are you going to are you gonna do that? Oh, there he goes. He's going to waddle it down there. A little bit late on the timing there. You really want to have the SCV there and waiting when uh, when you're ready to build the command center. But that's okay. He's going to put on the low ground versus Protoss. A bit of a risk. As an, oh, well, Actually, this is a huge risk, and John is actually really bad. I want to tell you why. Because a Protoss player at this point can go for a Stalker. Uh, he can already have a Zealot out, and he can have a Mothership Core on the way, and that's going to arrive here by the time that Mr. Total Biscuit has a Marine. And Marine uh, is all he's going to have. Wait, he's up to two right now. So I would not recommend this doing, uh, doing this versus Protoss, just because with the addition of the Mothership Core, we're starting to see players do a lot more aggression. Hang on, let me check. Let me check something here. Uh, yeah, I guess that's all right. Hopefully, hopefully you guys can still hear me. Because uh, the music is just so good that sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. But Total Biscuit going to be expanding down at the natural. And not a whole lot else going on. Is he saving up? What is he doing? He still hasn't gotten gas. Oh, my God. Don't do it. Don't you dare do it, Total Biscuit. All right. So he thinks he's playing Zerg. He actually thinks he's a Zerg here. He's going to be taking another expansion. So remember that time that I said don't do this outside of your natural? I would uh, I would definitely say also don't do this at your third base. John is just asking for trouble, but hey, man, this is why we kind of like him a little bit is because he's really bad at StarCraft. So he does have his third command center going to be going down. The Warhound down here is just like, I sure hope they don't send a Zealot out here because I'm going to die. We do have the probe going to be moving out right now. He will be able to scout that. This is actually, this is actually surprising that Reboot is going to be scouting this this early. Normally a Protoss player is not even going to bother scouting down there. Because why would you? It's not like they're going to be going for a third base at the five minute mark. Oh wait, it's Total Biscuit. And it's actually going to be saying a pylon as well. I feel like this this Protoss is having just like a blind read on what, uh, what Total Biscuit's actually going. Although maybe he knows just how terrible he actually is. As the probe there is going to spot this out. The probe could do is attack this SCV. But screw that because they're Warhounds, man. They want to be friends. They do not want to kill each other, and the Marine right there are going to scare that probe away. The probe could have killed off that SCV, though, which would have been pretty dope. I don't think uh, I don't think Total Biscuit's going to be able to make that into a planetary or an orbital 
in time as we do have the three uh, three warp gates now done. Now, one thing I want to mention is that Reboot should have actually had out some units before the warp gate was done, especially if he's going to be going for, I assume he's going to warp them in right now. Um, and also, warping in is a sentry. Yeah, I don't agree with the sentry either. Really, you just want Stalker and Zealot at this point. If they have that early of a third base, that's all you need to kill it. Because basically, you want to try and kill the command center before it floats away. And I guess the sentries will be useful fighting these bunkers, but with the force fields, but I don't know. We do see the command center is going to float away. And this is why our Protoss player is uh, hovering a lot of money right now. is because he didn't make units before the warp gate was done. Which was a big mistake. But that is why it is Bronze League Heroes. Oh god, the Stalker's going to go straight into the mineral line here. It does look like TB is going to unload his bunker. Be able to take out a couple of these units right now. As it looks like the uh, Marines going to hold their own for now. These units going to run directly into the main base. The one Zell probably not going to be able to do all that much. But unfortunately, TB's reaction time is so slow that he wasn't able to kill the Stalker just yet. Does manage to finally finish it off. And the Stalker and the Zealot are going to go down. Looks like he's going to go ahead and land this command center behind his uh, bunker wall here. Which is exactly what you should have done from the beginning, you greedy, greedy man. Uh, oh, Total Biscuit playing it very greedy. Uh, Reboot playing it like the reverse of greedy, where he's just making a million workers off of one base. If you're planning to kill your opponent while you're on one base, whoa, what's this Immortal doing? We got Marines chasing him down, and if only Immortals did splash damage, wouldn't that be nice? Oh, the Marines almost get him there. So that Immortal, six kills on him. More units going to be warping in right now, and continued production of Immortals. This Immortal is still alive. John really wants to kill this. He finally makes it work, but is going to pay the ultimate price as he sacrifices all those units. I didn't think that Marauder is going to get away. Maybe barely. Nope. Goodbye, Marauder, as he is pushed a little bit closer to the bunker. Unfortunately, he is dead, guys. Here's some more Zealots. Another Immortal going to be showing up here. Reboot. Both these players not having much. Uh, oh, God. Is that a planetary fortress in his natural? It's time for another pro tip of the day. Uh, Total Biscuit's bad, so I don't know if that's actually a pro tip, but it definitely has got to be helping you guys out. As you know, Force Field right there, and I think the Planetary might actually be what he needs to hold off here, as he never made enough units or kept enough units alive to be able to clear this out. Even the Mule's going to get taken out. Oh my god, I think the Planetary Forge is going to finish in just a moment. And indeed it does! The Planetary Forge might actually be able to take all of this down. Looks like uh, the SCVs are going to be able to repair this. What is it with with Bronze League heroes and people just building planetary fortress everywhere? I feel like it is the easy unit to just have your opponent roll their units into. Oh god, I'm having flashbacks. I'm having flashbacks, war flashbacks to the game where zealots endlessly sacrifice themselves for the greater good. Unfortunately, no good came of it. Oh god, more stalkers here. You've got to be careful. Looks like he's going to be able to kill off some of these units. Marines and the Marauder will get taken out. Look at that Gosu Micro. Going to be keeping those units alive. And then Micro directly into the planetary fortress. Don't do it. Why? It's time for a pro tip of the day. Do not engage planetary fortress with only a couple of gateway units. It's one of those things where I always tell Terran players do not, uh, do not not make orbital commands. Remember, as Terran, you cannot not orbital command. That's uh, that's what I'm saying, and I'm sticking to it. Also, John has completed supply block, but hey, that's why they invented supply drop. He's going to go ahead and free that up. He does have his own depots on the way, and quite a bit of production going on. Looks like Reboot finally going to go ahead and expand here. God knows he has enough SCVs over here punching the minerals. He has way, way too many. I gotta say, this looks hilarious. Never, never did I think I would watch a StarCraft game where you collect minerals with a shield. And that is exactly what's going on right there. But regardless, it looks like John now permanently stuck with his planetary fortress. A good investment, but it is not going anywhere anytime soon. One thing you can use it for is uh, more SCVs, I guess, is what he could really go for that. But I gotta say, it's so funny to see these bronze, bronze slash gold level games. Because as you guys know, Total Biscuit is a top, top, top gold level player in StarCraft 2, which is quite impressive. We're all proud of him. Someday he may make it to Platinum, but let's be honest, most likely not. We do have the Planetary Fortress here going to be chilling out. It does have seven kills, though, so congratulations there to, uh, to Total Biscuit. And, you know, you know, if Total Biscuit was ever to make, say, an eSports team, I would definitely not support it in any way. I, I, I think that that would be something that I just could not get behind after reviewing this gameplay. Although, then I would lose my position as the B-team captain, which I'm kind of upset about. Which, if Team Axiom ever gets, which you can see he is in Team Axiom, if he ever actually makes a B-team, I have a feeling, after this cast, I'm going to get demoted to the C-team captain almost immediately. So, that's fine. I'm willing to, uh, I'm willing to suffer through that. 
as John could be making three SCVs at a time if he wanted to. He is at, it's so funny to see these in the uh, in the Eunice County Station here. We do have 42 to 47, so Reboot actually has a chance here if he fully saturates this base, and he is going to take a third right now, which I think is the correct choice. Although Total Biscuit, once he realizes that he can actually invest his money to get units that can kill him, uh, then he may actually run into some problems here. He is adding on a lot of barracks right now, which is quite impressive. Could add on more reactors. If oh, did he actually do it? Oh, Tech Labs! He's going to be doing that. Why does he have so little gas? Is he mining gas his expansion? Nope! It's time for a pro tip of the day! Don't wait to 15 minutes to get your other gases. As you can see, he has way too many minerals and not enough gas. He has equalized out a little bit just by powering a million Marines. Marine Marauder, what a typical Terran, man. Just trying to beat the Protoss in the, around the 15, uh, 15 to 17 minute mark. It's always the best timing. Because even if Colossus are out, there just aren't nearly enough just yet. Reboot got to be making lots of units here, and he does have a Forge. Very nice, very nice. Not sure what this guy is doing over here. He was originally mining gas, but he just gave up on that. We do have Extended Thermal Lance and Total Biscuit once again having way too much money. Doesn't even know what to do with it here. I mean, so far he's got more command centers than he has bases, which is quite interesting. He's got the macro planetary fortress going on down here, which isn't even macroing. But if you research, uh, you see you can load up, you can load up guys inside the planetary. That will keep five SCB safe. Oh, guys, making another planetary down here. I'm telling you, people in Bronze League, try and make as few planetary fortresses as possible. I know they're fun. I know they're easy to control. I know they're easy to keep alive, but they really just are not that good. Uh, at a third base or potentially a fourth base is okay. At your natural, though, it had better be a pretty lulzy situation like we saw Total Biscuit in here. And look at this. He's even trapping the Automaton 2000. That thing is freaking out, man. I'd feel that uncomfortable if I had to be this close to John as well. Let's be honest. So it looks like he's got to try and get out of there. We'll see if John allows him to escape or not. But really, I feel like this whole game has been worth it just because of the planetary fortress in his own natural. Plus, the, the fact of the matter is, anytime I can laugh at Total Biscuit, I mean, I'm all for that. You can't pay me enough to do that. I, you, I, I can't pay enough to do that. I'm surprised he even sent these to me, to be honest. But hey, that's the risk you take when you send replays. Oh, guys, is he going to block his own units in? I think he is. Uh, do I even need to say pro tip of the day? Do not do this when you're playing against Terran because now his army is trapped on the outside. He can't deal with drops on the inside. He can't reinforce from his robotics unless it's a Colossus. Uh, okay. Well, that is the worst, I think, decision I have ever seen ever. All right, it's not a complete wall in there, so I look at Total Tool. But but still, this wall in is just not a good idea. I will say, wall ins on this map are very misleading. That definitely looks tight, but uh, I guess I guess I am mistaken there. I still do not recommend this. I'm just saying, it's not like Zerglings are going to run by, and then when you try and get back here to defend your natural, all your big clumpy units just clump up as clumpy units do. Now, one thing I like to say, though, is that uh, Reboot actually has a lot of workers here. He's up to 58 and could easily continue making more. And he's added on a lot of warp gates, which is a great call here. But uh, the main problem is, is that he doesn't have Zealot Legs yet. He doesn't have Psy Storm yet. Okay, maybe getting a little crazy on the warp gates right now. As uh, he is now making three more inside the main base and Templar Archives. I like the tenacity. I don't know if he's going to have enough money to power off this many gateways. We will find out, though. I think still massing up Colossus is the way to go. Because, I mean, let's be honest, Total Biscuit doesn't know how to make Vikings or Medivacs. Those are two units that require far more micro than his skill level will allow him to use. So for right now, he's just got to go Marine and Marauder, which would easily be defeated by either Storm Colossus, or Force Fields, all of which he is able to get, but he may be getting too little too late here. He's got a lot of money, but he's super supply blocked right now. Oh no, this might actually be a devastating blow here because he doesn't have any pylons. He has so much money, this is why you gotta spend your money. Alright, I like the idea of throwing down that many gateways. I don't like the idea of following this up with no pylons for like five minutes. Now he does have five pylons on the way, but time is running out. The glass is running out of the hourglass. The sundial is going to be approaching his doom. The digital clock is counting down. I, the stopwatch is about to reach zero. I don't know how else to say this because this army is about to be here. There's the big scan on the top of the ramp. One stem is going to be doing a ridiculous amount of damage to his own army. Now, is he going to be able to warp in units? He's got the high Templar, but they're too little too late, and the warp gates here are going to prevent him from retreating. Oh, this is going to be painful. Even John's macro is atrocious right now. He's just going to run right up there. He says move command all the way, and I think he's actually going to make this work. 
He is going to absolutely crush this. The Colossus on the high ground could have easily killed off this entire army. Oh, no, the High Templar! All right, well, their, their main purpose was to sacrifice themselves like lemmings. I don't think he realizes he's playing StarCraft, though. So John, with the beautifully timed planetary fortress at his natural, looks like he might be able to take this. Now, Zelt Legs is done, but it is not nearly enough. Now, remember that uh, Marine Marauder with no medevac support is actually really, really bad. And Total Biscuit should not have won this. And there we go. Reboot just leaves the game. Total Biscuit probably thinking he's the best gold leaguer to ever grace StarCraft 2. But uh, number one, I want to show you guys this game to make fun of Total Biscuit, which is a personal pleasure of mine. And number two, just because it's so bad that it's so, so good. So remember, you can send your replays to huskyreplays at gmail.com. And uh, I have my good friend Sinvicta. I'm going to put a link down below to his channel. He is the one who helps sort through these replays. He even live streams the sorting through the replays, which is pretty hilarious. And uh, it's basically like his full-time job, I feel like. So big thanks to him. And yeah, I will, I will cast more Bronze League heroes. I just want to make fun of my good friend Total Biscuit. Of course, we are really good friends. He does run Team Axiom, which is owned and operated by Jenna Bain, who is his wife. They actually have a legit team. If you guys didn't know this, uh, Total Biscuit is involved with a very, very legit team who's starting to get some legit sponsors, which is actually really cool. So on a serious note, when it's not April Fools, um, definitely go support Team Axiom and Total Biscuit. They are troopers. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time.